already got the laptop on, configured the sensors, got my uh, fuel pressure, oil pressure, TPS, basic setting in there, fuel pump running. So it has trouble idling at first. There's an idle setting that I'm not sure how to mess with, but um, I'm just learning all this right now. So let's see what we can get right now. So. That beeping is really annoying. Takes a second for the idle to, to level out. So I'm messing with the tune, trying to get the idle kind of smooth. The whiny here, that's from the uh, power steering pump not being hooked up. But I've uh, got a pretty smooth idle right now. We're about a thousand RPM. Oh, it's not uh, focused right there. Still messing with settings, but it's still, but it's uh, a lot smoother now. Sounds uh, really good. Actually, not that loud at idle. Still, mess still uh, messing with it. Baby steps. It's pretty badass because it's a straight pipe but it's not even that loud. So uh, happy about that. clean all this up this is really ugly I need to finish cutting out the rest of that um, overflow tank I now I need to finish hooking up the fans the intercooler piping and then I can start you know taking it out for a drive and slowly starting to tune it Get the car jacked up here. Did a little bit of work without a recording. Just to get amped up, you want to get going. So we're close, I'm really close to driving it. I actually started the car and I put it in gear. I was able to roll it forward and backwards. So that was pretty exciting. At least I know I put the clutch in kind of correct enough to make it move. One other thing I just did was I trimmed the IS300 fans. You can see I got rid of the overflow tank, which cleans it up a lot. But word of advice, I fucked up. You can see, hold on, let me try to brain that up. So I was going to open up all of this, get rid of all this excess, but when I did it, I realized it created a hole when you want to keep it sealed up. So word of advice, don't cut all of that. Just cut uh, enough to get the overflow tank out without cutting into the actual shrouds. So my bad. Eventually, I'll grab another set and cut it up the right way, but it cleaned up the engine bay a lot, made it cleaner here, easier to access anything on the accessory belt. So right now what I'm doing now that I've done that is... I need to get the speed sensor on, so I need to remove one of the, uh, there's like a there's like two rubber mounts on the uh, mount, I need to get rid of one of them to get the speed sensor on, it's not able to screw in with the mount in the way, so I'm going to take that mount off, get the speed sensor on, where did, I, where did I leave the sensor, I left the sensor under the car, so it's a Marlin crawler, mechanical to digital conversion, I'll make sure that goes on, I'll pin in the new plug, get that on, seal that up, and then after that, what else I need to do? I have an oil leak that I need to find. But once I'm out of time, let me get the speed sensor on. 
So I pulled the speed, not really the sensor, but the speed gear out out of the transmission. So I'll show you how this works. So this goes inside the transmission, spins, gets a reading, it turns that little, whatever you want to call it inside, turns the speedo cable, and then in turn you see it on your dash. But since I'm not using a speedo cable anymore, I'm using this Marlin Crawler VSS vehicle speed sensor. So it takes the mechanical input, converts it to digital. Got a plug, we got signal power ground. That'll go to my ECU, you calibrate it, it reads it. Now that I have the dash, it'll read up on the dash as well. So it's pretty simple. This is uh, slotted. So it goes only uh, goes into one way, goes in one way. Gets its reading, so screw that in, uh, pin the new plug, and I'm done with that for right now. Oh, I got a good one here. Hold up. So I was on Facebook Marketplace and I saw someone post these up, and I've been looking, I've been trying to find a pair of these, and I finally found someone selling them. Eh, it's an all right deal, not crazy, but cheaper than anywhere else that I was able to find. So hold on one second, I'll pull them out. So obviously I got six piston calipers off the CTSV, but these things are huge. Look at that compared to my hand. It's two of my hands. So time for new wheels. Yep, got something else in the mail right after I got the calipers. Let me, uh, I think it should be the mounting kit. All right, so it wasn't the uh, mounting kit for the caliper. It's actually a uh, overflow tank that I bought for the Cressida since the stock one is pretty ugly. This one should be able to fit in between the intercooler piping. Let me see. Oh, well, I don't have the radiator in right now. Hold on, let me put the radiator in. All right, so I threw the radiator in and this little mount should fit somewhere right in there if I did my measurements right, which it does. It clears intercooler piping next to the radiator. So I'll just have to mount it. Sweet. So it's kind of like that awkward moment when you order packages and you don't remember what came in them. So it's kind of like Christmas in July. Let me see what I got. So pretty simple in this one. I think it's, uh, so this is changing the barb fitting on the fuel pressure regulator because I didn't, because the vacuum source off of the intake manifold is larger than the nipple on the fuel pressure regulator. regulator. So I upped the nipple size. That'll solve that problem. This one should be a T that I need for the wastegate. Did it come out? Oh, it's wrapped in there. Yep, T for the wastegate, since you need to T it from the wastegate to the turbo housing to the boost controller. That, that. Let's see what we got. This one is from ProWire. Okay, so I got some DR25 that I needed to finish up some loom. Uh, positive and negative cables that I needed, uh, some plugs that I didn't need, I ordered extras by mistake, and some ring terminals. They come in a pack of, what, a hundred? It's pretty awesome, so I won't have to look for those again. And then, here from Amazon, should be a relay kit, so I needed some relays to wire in the fans. So I Unfortunately, I don't know which kind of, I'm having trouble finding relays, so I bought these cheap ones off Amazon. So it's just, just what I'm gonna roll with for now, and you know, if they burn out or whatever, I'll do some more research on replacing them, but kind of finishing up, got a hold of the fabricator. He said he'll let me know next week when he has some free time, because I need him to mount. So the fabricator is gonna mount the overflow can for me. Right there, he's gonna mount the catch can for me somewhere back in this corner. And I need him to get that intercooler pipe in to fit better as well as welding on the blow-off valve and the IAT sensor on for me. And that's really all I need him to do. Maybe uh, weld this little guy up. This, this feeds the uh, stock twins. Maybe I'll have him weld that up too so I don't have to worry about it. So besides that, no, looking pretty good. All right, so it's pretty hot out in today's video. I want to go over how to wire up uh, aim dash to your AM Infinity. I've never done it before. Going to figure it out right now, live. So going to open this up, see what our instructions say, and go forward from that.
All right, so first first things first, when you open it up, there's no user manual, no user, no user manual. It tells you to go online and download it. But it comes with this little sub harness. Well, here's the thing, I bought this new used. It's new, but I bought it from someone that wanted to use it, that didn't use it. But on the sub harness, it looks pretty straightforward. Luckily, it's pretty, it's uh, pre-labeled. I'll show you what comes on it. Uh, so we have, there's can negative and there's can positive, which is probably this other blue one. Nope. So one blue is can negative. This white one is can positive. Black is ground. Simple. This blue is the, what is it? R30. I forget what it is. The RS232. So that one's the RS232. Uh, hold on one sec. It's hard to hold these. TX. Red is uh, 9 to 15 volts. And what is the white one? The RS232RX. So pretty easy. I mean, I, realistically, I could pull in you know, a little motorcycle battery in here, hook up the uh, positive and negative, and hopefully be able to fire this up. That could be something I could try out first, you know, make sure it turns on. But uh, let me download the user, user manual and see what else we got going on here. So uh, get this going right now and jump back into it. So the motorcycle battery I have must be dead. I'm going to have to charge it up. But I come out to the car, you can hook up the positive and the negative to the battery. It turns on, you start getting readings. So now I'll just have to download the manual, see the uh, pinout to make sure I'm going to plug everything in correctly. But it seems pretty straightforward so far, but we know how that works. So let me download that and go from there. So for the fuel level sender, this is going to be for the gauge. This is going to be for the light. should be red and green at the E3 plug. Let's so look over here, E3, interim panel wire behind glove box. Thinking this one back here that we've tapped into for power. So the red one with the green, or the green with the red wire should be the uh, fuel level sender. All right, sorry for the beeping, but I need to have the key on. So I got the dash hooked up. I got the can hooked up, uh, power, ground, uh, just loosely hooked up. And then here I got, I downloaded the app, or the, um, not the app, but the whatchamacallit on the computer. And I'm configuring now certain messages, what sensors it wants to read, RPM, shift lights, basic. It's pretty basic and it's pretty straightforward so far. So I'm gonna cycle it, send it, turn it back on, and see if I get a reading. What is it, John? YouTube, comment, like this video if you like it. Watch some more if you don't like it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>